Welcome to the Rangers Today Baseball Podcast. From the bus leagues to the big leagues, the Rangers Today Baseball Podcast has got you covered. Here's Jeff and John. Hey everybody, welcome to the Rangers Today Baseball Podcast. This is episode number 108, and today is Justin Foscu. Justin Foscu, let me say that one more time. This episode, along with all spring training episodes, is brought to you by Premier Properties. Whether you're buying, selling, leasing, or own investment property, Premier Properties can help you out. Go to SWDallasRealty.com. That's SW, like Southwest, DallasRealty.com, or DM me on Twitter at, at ReclinerNerd.com if you've got questions about investing in real estate. You can also go to the rangerstoday.com website and there's a link up top for premier properties and all our episodes during spring training are going to be brought to the, uh, brought to you by them. Thanks a lot, premier properties. Okay, guys, we got a rundown real quick about what we're going to do. Jeff's at spring training. We're going to, first of all, we're going to go into spring training. What's up, dude? By the way, I'm good. Good. I'm where are you? You're up in the press box. Yeah. I'm in one of the radio booths. Um, they're having their uh, annual college tournament here. So we may um, hear some stuff in the background. Yeah, I mean it's it's always Oregon State, and I mean this place is really crowded, uh, okay. and Oregon State's just been hitting home run after home run after home run. I think they just yeah. got another. Yeah, 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 yeah. There it goes. All yeah. right. So there's the cheers from the crowd. There's the. It's not bad. It, it's it's not bad. Okay, oh, okay. Well, we got to. Okay, so we got to address a couple. What here's what we're gonna do, guys. First of all, Jeff and I got to dig, dig into what he's seen so far in spring training. We'll talk about any news, Chris Young, all of that. We're also going to talk about, I told you we're going to talk about this. We're going to talk about, are the Rangers giving up on spending money? The ownership's cheap. I said, no, they're not. You're absolutely wrong. We'll talk about that. And then I do have to address the 800-pound gorilla in the room. Uh, I got on a deal the yesterday talking about Trevor Bauer. Trevor Bauer chimed in. Just going to tell you where I'm sitting on that and explain it real quick at the end before we get Justin on here. Jeff, you've been there two, You've been there since Tuesday night. Um, you saw everybody show up on Wednesday. You've been to workouts. Anything standing out besides talking to Chris Young? Uh, no, not really. Um, you know, they're just not doing a lot right now. I mean, I, I mean, the, the, the news of the day here today is that Josh Young showed up and promptly uh, yeah, had, let's to talk about for, that. had to go for an MRI with his calf, uh, left calf. Um, you know, he was in a great mood when we talked to him. He's, um, uh, he's, um, uh, Rooming with Wyatt Langford, uh, just Never heard of it. and um, all all of a sudden, uh, I, I saw him on a golf cart, and I was like, "Oh well, he just must not be working today, working out today." And uh, he was working out. And apparently, he hurt his calf, so he went for an MRI, and uh, we'll see. We'll see what it is. I mean, I guess you know, he, he's here. He's here three days before the start of full squad workouts. So, I mean, if you're going to get hurt, get it get it out of the way now. But um, they are not going to mess around with any little – they are going to – they're going to say sit down if he feels like he's got a, a boo-boo anywhere. They're not going to yeah. mess with it. Yeah, and, you know, and the, and, and the, the thing that complicates it if he is injured and has to miss some time to start the season is, you know, is Corey Seager going to be healthy to start the season? So you could be sure. looking at a, a Rangers infield of Nate Lowe, Marcus Simeon, uh, Josh Smith, and Ezekiel Durant, uh, or, sure. or Matt Duffy. Who, who's in camp and, and, and played for Bruce Bochy early in his career, was runner-up for Rookie of the Year, uh, I think, in 2014. Uh, so, you know, there are there are options. Uh, Justin Foskey, our guest, is, is a potential option. So he, he's been working at third base. He was working at first today when I saw him. But, um, you know, you just you just roll with the punches. Um, but we'll, we'll see, you know, before anybody pushes will- the panic button or anything like that. Just let's see what the MRI says. And, and, um, they're not going to be a hundred percent healthy all year. Right. You know, the, the problem with a muscle injury is it kind of lingers all year. So hopefully it's knocked out. If it's anything serious at all, maybe it's just something that takes a couple of days, but, um, we'll see. We'll see. Okay. So you've, you've seen it. Are the minor league pitchers and catchers here too? Uh, there's some, they've been working out in the afternoon. Um, haven't really haven't really watched a lot of them. They're when they've started is coinciding with the clubhouse time, and so um, we're just kind of mi- missing each other. I mean, there are enough of them in big league camp that you want to see who've been pitching. Uh, we've talked to a lot of them, and uh, so anyway, it's uh, it's it's good good stuff, and uh, you know, it's spring training, and it's my favorite time of the year. Uh, there are, there are a lot of autograph hounds out. 
Um, I think they're they already out. I think they out. I think they outnumber the fans at this point. Um, unfortunately, although more and more people are showing up, uh, uh, people you know, uh, you know uh, Chuck McCoy, uh, the Ranger Day subscriber, is, is, is here with his wife from Arlington. Uh, our good friend Cal, who, who you know was married to the Cookie Lady, he's still coming out here. Saw him this morning. So uh, the usual suspects are here, but there are going to be a lot more people than, than are normally here. Sure, that's part of it. I mean, uh, when by the time you and I get there, you're there till when? Next Friday? Ah, yeah, the 23rd. And I'll come home for, I don't know, it's about 10 days, right? And then we'll head we, out. We leave on the 6th. And then I uh, and then I come back to Texas. When we come back together, I'm back for like four days, and then I come back out here So uh, to finish off camp. So uh, lots of stuff. Um and while while we're while we're talking about it, you need to you need to uh, click uh, go to rangersday.com. There's a forty eight dollar spring training special to sign up for one year. Uh, uh, one of our new subscribers the last couple of days is Newey Scrubs from NBC Five. So uh, Newey Newey knows what 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 a value that is, but also what good quality uh, content he'll be getting for a year. So uh, it's Newey Scrubs endorsed. So come on out and uh, join the club. Forty-eight dollars. That's four bucks a month. So uh, you can you can find that shaking out your your couch cushions. So um, exactly. let's do that. Let's 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 build the subscriber base and have some more fun. Absolutely. Now let, now today is today the day that we're starting to see position players come in. Well, uh, Young and Langford. Yes, uh, there have been a lot what of guys here. A lot of the young guys are here. Uh, 40, 40 man members: uh, Dustin Harris, Jonathan Ornelas. Uh, or, you know, Justin Foscu, obviously here. He lives here, but still a young 40-man member. Um, Blaine Krim, who's not on the 40-man, he's here. Uh, so it's some, some of the non-roster invitees or position players uh, are, are also here. So it's it's a, it's going to grow. You know, I would expect that tomorrow will be a big day for guys either showing up or, or getting to town. And then I, I would imagine that by Sunday, Everybody who's anybody uh, is, is is here and ready to go. What is the report date today, or when is it? Well, the there's not really a report. Player. There's not really a report date anymore, uh, from what the Rangers were telling me last year. Um, you just got to show up. You know, just be yeah. here on the be here on the nineteenth or the first day of workouts, and uh, they don't anticipate that, uh, at least not yet, that that anybody is not going to be here. Um, uh, Diego Castillo was was a day late because he had some visa issues. Uh, uh, David that Robertson was him. given was given permission to not have to be here until tomorrow, I guess because he's thirty nine and and uh, has a career three ERA and one hundred seventy five saves. So, um, but but there are plenty of guys here, plenty of plenty of minor leaguers who uh, you you see every once in a while. Um, so anyway, it's a good group. Uh, it's been pretty business-like, I would say. Uh, guys going about their business, uh, no, no celebrating the the World Series. Uh, we asked, and, and they've already they've done they that. Have to move on. They can't rest on their laurels, and so it's it's good uh, it's good that they're uh, doing that, and that's the mindset because you know if you if you get in a hole early, Nathaniel, uh, Nathan Neovaldi talked about it the other day. If you get in a hole early. You know, he won it in, in 18 with the Red Sox, and in 19 they were dreadful to start, and they never recovered. There's got to be an urgency. <clears throat> There's got to be a desire to get out there and uh, uh, be good again. And you know, the Rangers have a, a pretty tough schedule to open the season. You know, they okay, they really do. Well, and to and to piggyback off of everything you just said, you talked to Chris Young. Uh, you guys talked to Chris Young. He made mention that as far you wrote an interesting article about Jordan Montgomery. It does not seem like that is really front and center for them that Jordan Montgomery is is going to be here. Um, that's kind of what you alluded to. Although you got you said there might apparently you asked and there might be some creative ways, kind of what the U Darvish defer some money stuff, um, a way to do it. But your thoughts are I don't think you don't think it's happening. No, I, I think it's gonna. I think it would have to take something like that uh to to make it happen and then you know but then you both sides have to want to do it you know jordan montgomery isn't doesn't have the off field earning potential that shohei otani has so does he want his money now 
the Rangers, you know, how long after a contract do you want to pay uh, Jordan Montgomery or any pitcher? So um, I'm not. I don't. I don't know that it, I, I see it happening. Um, it, it's too bad. But you know, one one thing that that a lot of people seem to forget is that the the Rangers last year, for most of the first half, had Evaldi, Gray, uh, Heaney, and Dunning in their rotation. Yep. Well, if the season were to start today, they would have Evaldi, Gray, okay. Heaney, and Dunning, plus and whoever then, wins the fifth spot. And, and you know, right now, Cody Bradford seems to be the front runner, but I, I got to tell you, I think Danny Duffy has a chance. Yeah. Uh, you know, I, I wouldn't, I wouldn't sleep on Jose Urania, who finished the year well with the Red Sox. Uh, and then you know, you never know uh, if one of these young guys is going to bust out. But the Rangers are intent on looking at all of them. Um, sure. They they want their 13 best pitchers, their five best starters, and uh, they're gonna they're gonna do it. So um, it was a interesting conversation with with, with Chris Young. Um, you know, he, he kind of had to. You know, it was the it's the it's been the the elephant in the room the whole off season. That with the TV contract, the questions were kind of paired together. Um, he said the TV uncertainty is a real thing. You know, the Rangers don't have a deal beyond this year. And this year's deal is for less money than they got last year. So they 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 have the highest payroll in club history. You know, it's not like the owners are cheap. You know, they, Stop they that. Have, uh, yeah, exactly. They have Get spent over that. more money than uh, any team uh, the last two off seasons. And now you know, obviously the Dodgers are a different category. But um, you know, rich guys get rich by being smart with their money, and uh, they're already over the luxury tax threshold. Um, that's not to say that they can't add somebody else, uh, but I don't. I just any talk that the owners are cheap right now, or that the Rangers are complacent, they won their title and don't care anymore. That's just it's ludicrous. That's just people looking for clicks or something. I mean, I, yeah. it, it's it's exactly. completely absent of any concrete thought. Um, it's the it, they, they, these are the Ranger fans that were a pain in the ass all year long. That every time a loss happened. Bochy should be fired. Someone should do this. They need to bench this guy or whatever. They're there. We love them. I engage them. You don't. But, I mean, that's what they're going to do. And if they're out there right I'm now trying saying, to engage a little more. So. Do I? I understand. Hey, you know, great. If you're passionate about it, awesome. But this isn't a football season. This is a long haul. And a lot can You've happen. trade deadline. You don't, yeah, and you don't need to, you don't need to cut the kicker after day one. You know, you need you, the, the – <laughs> The Rangers are going to be fine. So, um, you know, just, you just kind of let it work. It just works itself out. That's just the way that – that's just the way baseball season works. And Absolutely. I think the Rangers are, are going to have uh, one of the one of the best offenses again. Uh, they're, they're going to have pitchers and how to get out. So the bullpen's going to be better. So um, I, I, I'm not too freaked out here uh, like, like a lot of people seem to be. They have got guys on this team. The only bat they lost was Garver, who did, by the way, do well during the playoffs. But you've got Justin Foskey, Wyatt Langford. You've got, I mean, you've got other guys that are, you know, Ezekiel Duran, who had, a, he was unbelievable for a part of the season. You've sure. got guys that can fill those spots. You don't have to fill it with one guy. You've got two or three that can do it. You've got some guys that are going to be at AAA who can get hot and force their way up here to do that. And then if none of it's working, not one of them can produce, how hard is it to go out and find some veteran hitter out there that you might be able to go trade and get that's just going to primarily DH? You can do it. That's one sure. guy. Everybody in this lineup is going to go through a lull at some point. We all know it. They go through it, except for, you know, your your top-line guys. They usually they, – they don't last very long. But that's part of this game. And I'm telling you, this lineup is so good – the back end of the bullpen looks way better than it did going into the last offseason when we were coming in. You've got Jonathan yeah. Hernandez coming back. You've got LeClerc, who looked like LeClerc. Spores is coming into his own again. Now you've got Yates and you've got Robertson who are joining the pack. Maybe Bradford ends up back in the bullpen. You've got – I mean, there's a there's a lot of guys there that Bochy has to play with. And if you can get five or six innings out of your starters, I think you got a chance to sh keep yourself in the game. And this offense will is never out of a game ever. I don't care if it's 11 runs. This offense is never out of a game. Okay, with that being said, Jeff, I got to get to the last thing that we were talking about. And I, it's me that did it. I'll bring up what he said. 
but I want to just say my, you, you don't get into this, but I get into talking to guys on Twitter. Um, you do a little bit, but not as much as I do. And a guy named, and, and so I've got to get into this because you, I'm the first guy between the two of us who kind of brought up Trevor Bauer. I said, what do you think? I mean, this guy that's doing cheap, you were kind of like, nah, you know, you, you didn't really give a strong opinion. You were just kind of like, I don't know. You know, there's some yeah. things there. That's kind of the way you felt. And yeah. so, so I went and did a deep dive. So this, so he comes on, a guy named Jeff Bates, who is yeah. a listener to us. He likes us. Jeff does a little videos he makes sometimes. He came on and said, Trevor Bauer is going to be league minimum. The Rangers aren't going to get Jordan Montgomery. They need to do something like this. They need to go get Trevor Bauer. I responded to him and said, I don't think it's a good deal. I said, look, he, there's some things there. I think he, he even though it, it, she obviously was trying to set him up or whatever, I think she, I think he did hit her and there's some stuff out there. Um, and Trevor jumped on. Oh, really? Said, I'm just yes. Pissed. He responded to me. And let me tell you what he said real quick. Cause I, I didn't go back into it. Look, I'm not a guy that accuses somebody of something and, you know, anything like that. And I'm not going to, because I said, you can listen to this and be, I, I linked an audio to it. And I'll kind of say what the audio said in a minute. And I said, you can listen to this and be okay with him. Yes, it was consensual, but he, but according to this, he punched her. A woman asked me to punch her. Everything stops there. I don't hit women. He came back and he said, I never punched anyone. He said, I said from this, uh, Hang on, let me find it here. I never, I never punched anyone. He's responding to me. And I've said that from the day one. I have never beaten anyone either. Lindsey Hill lied about the whole thing. Okay. I didn't go back and get into it with Trevor Bauer. I'm not going to because, Jeff, you know as well as I know, we have no clue what happened exactly. Neither one of us know. We cannot stand here and emphatically say, yes, he did or no, he didn't. I do think this woman – was obviously trying to set him up, and there was there's some evidence of that going forth. I responded to – let me be clear to Trevor because I think Trevor might watch this. Trevor, I have no problem with you getting back in the league if you're truly innocent. I really don't, and I don't know whether you're guilty or innocent. But what I can say is I did not want you to come to the Texas Rangers because Jeff is in the media. I am a fan, and I don't think – any guy that just won the World Series after this season, first time ever in the history, should have to answer questions immediately about Trevor Bowers on your team. What do you think of him as a teammate? What do you think about these charges? You understand that, Trevor. I don't think the Rangers need to be answering those questions. They need to be answering questions like Corey Seager, where are you at on the sports hernia? You think you'll be back for opening day? Jeff, you understand that. That's questions he needs to be answering. He doesn't need to be answering all the PR crap that everyone's going to have to ask about, do you think he did it? Do you think he didn't? All of that, because the Rangers are not going to answer that. Corey Seager can say he was a teammate. I never had an issue with him as a teammate, but I am not going to. That's where I felt on this. So that was my feelings on it, and I've addressed it. I appreciate it coming up. I have nothing against you personally, Trevor. I did not think the Rangers should sign you, and I – if y'all listen to that audio, you do have some explaining to do. That audio that I posted, she has him on the phone, and she says, I need to have a better – she said, I need to communicate better because the way you punched me or hit me, I couldn't go to work for a couple of days, and it was more than it needed to be, and I couldn't go. To which you responded, I don't want you to feel scared of me. That will never happen again. I didn't, and it's on the audio. Now, you could, in all fairness, just be trying to get a weird chick off the phone and just placating her to get her off the phone because you don't want to deal with her. That could have been it. So I'm not sitting there saying, but that's suspect in that sense of thing. All right, I've addressed it. You got anything to add? Uh, I, I, I do and I don't. I mean, I, I think that uh, if the Rangers had wanted to sign them, they would have done it by now. Uh, sure. I, I think that, um, you know, Chris Chris Young uh, has a an idea of the kind of player he wants on the team from a personality standpoint, and yeah. uh, and I don't know if Trevor Bauer fits that or not. I mean, I you know I I, I interviewed Trevor once. Uh, it was for a story I did for a Japanese magazine. We did the interview in Arlington at the old ballpark, and uh, he was great. You know, very insightful. 
insightful. Uh, he did record it, um, but um, you know, I don't know how it came, it came out in translation because I write in English and it comes out in Japanese. But he didn't say anything controversial or anything. It was about um, yeah. just kind of unorthodox. I, I think it was about unorthodox ways to prepare for games and things like that. Um, but I, I, um, you know, you didn't know that this would happen between me and Bauer. <laughs> this, this, you would, you, you see a lot of things happening with professional athletes and women who, um, Are, target, them. Accuse, they target accuse, them. accuse people of, 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 of these people of crimes, uh, you know, notably the, the Bill's punter, you know, uh, the, the kid they brought into camp who had like, can't remember his nickname, like Leg of God or something. He went to San Diego State. He was in camp. He got accused of participating in a game, game rape. Turned out to not be even remotely true. He wasn't charged with anything, but guess what? He doesn't have a job. Uh, this, you know, the, the, the Trevor Bauer situation, the Lindsey Hill, um, you know, it's, he, he to, to his credit, he defended himself to the fullest extent he could. He's claimed innocence uh, the, the entire time. And um, it came out, you know, there's plenty of evidence to show that uh, she was she was trying to, to take him for money. And at the time, he was he was making a, a boatload of money, thirty million a year. So um, it's unfortunate that those things happen. Uh, but he, there's also yeah. been pictures that have come out with her with black eyes. And scrapes on her face. Now I'm not there saying was also her the next the next morning supposedly with nothing wrong with her at all. Absolutely. So, so, so it's it's, it's uh, yeah it's it's this subject that's it's unfortunate because you know we don't know the answer. To at the time, but at the time, you know, you, you're accused of this. Uh, the public jumps the gun in the the, the Me Too era. And you don't believe everything women says. Uh, the Dodgers where they're located. Uh, they're, you know, they they have to. They're in a, you know, they're in that culture. They have to. They has have to, to be an investigation. Uh, MLB, who probably, definitely does not like Trevor Bauer. <laughs> you know the way he's, uh, and he's even admitted here in the recent months about how uh, he shouldn't have spoken out to uh, about the commissioner and, and some of the things there that probably put him in a corner the tacky, and probably, with the tacky stuff and stuff like that made him a, a, a target in the commissioner's office. And, um, but I, I think the, you know, the, the thing is, and, and people have come out and said that, yes, Trevor Bauer is a good teammate, all of that. Um, it would, I think it would take a lot for Chris Young to, he would have to be convinced. He'd have to meet with Trevor. He would have to talk to him. They would want to do their investigation. Like they investigate, investigated Wyatt Langford or any draft pick. Um, they, they would want, they would have to feel a hundred percent comfortable because whether Trevor likes it or not, perception is that he's, um, um, likes to beat, likes to beat women when he's, when he's, uh, engaged in sexual intercourse with them. And, and, yes. and, and, you know, the, the thing that has always been told to me is that if you're a general manager, do you believe strongly enough in the person that you're willing to stand up in front of cameras and, and say, explain why you're bringing this guy into your community. And Trevor Bauer, again, my experience with him has been very, very good. Yep. Uh, no, no, no ill will toward him at all whatsoever. I'm I sympath- never met him. sympathetic to what he's going through, honestly, because um, it, it looks like he was set up and, um, you know, no charges have ever been filed. Lawsuits have been dismissed. And uh, this this uh, Lindsey Hill has gone on TV and, and and tried to you know continue the story, make a little money. Um, she but extorted fact, him. That that that, yeah, that part of it's the, relatively the, clear. The matter is that you know once the you know it's it's like when somebody tweets something that's wrong, that's flashy, big headline, gets a bunch of retweets, you know, and then they go out and say, "Oh, I was wrong," and it doesn't get nearly the same attention. But exactly. once the uh, once the seed is planted, you have this incredible, difficult task of overcoming the perception, and that's where Trevor Bauer is right now. And you know, he, he's I know he's talked to, to teams, he's he's gone on uh, TV shows uh, and, and podcasts. He's, he's been on a he's, lot of podcasts. He's he's obviously defending himself if 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 he's uh, in stumbling upon our little uh, our little. Um, 
my my comment Out, to again, again. Here, you know, and um, right. is he a great pitcher? He absolutely is a great pitcher. Would he help the Good. Rangers? He a hundred percent would help the Rangers. I don't think there's any question about it. It's just a question of if he's a fit in the clubhouse, and that's what that's what Chris Young has to decide. And just based on what we know about Chris Young and the players that are on the roster right now, and what we may or may not know about Trevor Bauer, he doesn't seem like a fit. It, it's it, he he lacks a cohesive clubhouse. And let's be clear about one thing: charges were never filed. Um, I think her if her intention was to try to to extort him. Uh, I think by the time she ever thought about threatening, all these bruises that we saw, all these things were gone. And that is a he said, she said. There's really no evidence either way that you couldn't have charged him with anything if she was already healed up. from. And, and I'm not saying he's the one that put the bruises on her. Honestly, I don't know. I have no clue. And I, it's really sad if he is 1,000% innocent and he didn't even get rough in bed, as they say. I mean, I feel horrible for him. I really thought someone like the A's would be perfect for him. They're already in the middle of the biggest PR nightmare right now where they can't figure out where they're playing. You sign Trevor Bauer, you let him deal with the media for the first all of spring training, get out there, do his thing, and you might flip him at the trade deadline for a lower tier prospect. You're not going to get a top prospect for him because of that, but let him um, let him make his uh, little tour there. That's that's where I thought if I was the GM of them, that might be someone I'm looking at. You know what I mean? Because mm -hmm. the PR nightmare is already there. You might as well throw in a good pitcher to go with it that we can flip into something. Yeah, um, well, but one thing, winning does cure everything. And if he come, you know, if if you were to join a team and be great, I'm telling you, he would be embraced. But it's it's getting over that hurdle of public perception and. Um, I hope he does because he's he's an an interesting guy. Uh, yes, he is, and he's a good ball player. He's a good pitcher, very good pitcher, uh, one of the best. He's an ace in this league when he, he is on. Cy Young for crying out loud! I mean, you know, he should. He, he, he won a Cy Young. I mean, this, yes. this is a guy who who knows how to how to do it, and um, I, I do I do wish he he could get back in the league. I think he's been. Uh, unfairly punished for something that uh, he, he uh, at more evidence points to him not doing than, than uh, pointed to him doing. So uh, we'll see what happens. Uh, I just don't think it's a fit with the Rangers. I really don't. And, and for me personally, the audio was a little uncomfortable. Um, I just, if someone, if my wife told me she wanted me to punch and choke and do all that in bed, it's just not me. I mean, I, I'm just not that way. And I'm not trying to say you even did that. You could, Tell me, John, I never did any of that. Oh, you know what? I would have to take your word for it. And I don't know. And 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 so I'm not. I don't think my team that I love, I'm a homer for the Rangers. I don't want any of these guys having to answer that question right now. I want them to be answering the short offseason. We want to repeat. How are you feeling after the off? That's where I want to be when the season starts. I don't want to be answering any of this weird stuff to the side where you're having to roll your eyes and go, again, he seems like a good teammate. Yes, he throws. He's good to be on our team. I don't know anything about that stuff, and I don't really know exactly what he was trying. That's the questions that are going to have to be asked for any team he gets on. Sure, sure. And that's, that's, and that's why I don't like it. Guys, let's get let's get Justin Foscu in there. I think he texted you a while ago. We're going to get him in here, um, and, and let's get Justin Foscu. Then we'll go down to the best leagues real quick after that. What do you think? Sounds good to me. All right, Justin Foscu right after this. And joining us right now from Arizona, where he actually lives, but it's the start of spring training. He's in the big league camp, but he's been there before, but now he's on the 40-man roster. It's Justin Foscu. What's going on, man? What's up, guys? Hey, uh, thanks for having me on. Yeah, you know, um, Cody Bradford beat you. He was the first three-time guest. You were you were the That's only good two-time guest for a long time. Uh, yeah. But, yeah, so you're the second three-time guest. Uh, we'll get you a... a a green ribbon, I got a red ribbon. I think blue gets blue is for first, but um, thanks for coming on. Yeah, uh, uh, and you get here early, and it's it's about 
145 right now, so yep. not a full, full day, but pretty full. We have saw you, I saw you sweating over at first base. I think, I think I didn't tweet it, but a lot of people tweeted it. A, be- a lot of people were tweeting about it. I got, I'm getting text messages about it. That was fun. First base is uh, first base is fun, man. Like I think uh, it's obviously something different than second and third. Um, I would. It's obviously more similar to third than it is second. So, and I I've only played like eight games there, mm-hmm. and I had fun when I was over there. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, I told I told the guys and I told the infielders when I'm over there, I want to be that guy that you know gets out there early, gives the guys you know time to warm up in between yeah. innings. I want to take pride in that. I want to take pride in um, picking every ball that if they if they make a bad throw. Like I want to be that guy that picks that picks it. Um, yeah, like when I'm an infielder and I want to be able to say like, man, I like I feel comfortable throwing it over first. Like yeah. I, I'm comfortable with that guy catching anything wherever it is and like whenever if I'm you know going to be playing first like I want to be that guy for those guys so um it's it's been fun so far I would say like you don't really have to worry too much there's like the angles at first base are you know way easier than I would say third okay um and then you obviously don't have to worry about throwing it across so (laughs) um but I'm still learning I'm still you know there's some things I got to work on over there and the plays, uh, you know, turning double plays and the cutoffs and all that, I still got to learn. So, yeah. Um, but so far, it's been fun. Yeah. Uh, well, today you were working on when I watched you holding the runner, getting off the base, catching the grounder, throwing the second. Mm-hmm. I mean, there's, a, there, you know, I guess, I guess what Moneyball made it famous, uh, you know, first base. It's easy to learn, right? Watch. It's incredibly difficult, or whatever it was. <laughs> but I think, I think if played everywhere else in the infield it's not going to be a yeah i would say it's it's definitely easier than all the other (laughs) positions i'll say that i didn't want to say it but like yeah it's way easier than third it's way easier than second yeah um yeah it's It's another it's gonna be a learning process and And it's another it's another tool in the toolbox i mean you gotta have we're trying to get on the field your back can put you on the field you need multiple places to get out there. And they're, you know, look, this infield's relatively set, but you're a guy that can come in here, earn a spot on this team, and not only DH, but you could give guys a blow at third at first. You play second base. I don't know if shortstop's in your wheelhouse, but I mean, you've no, probably, played it. probably not. I would have been playing shortstop in the minor leagues if they thought that I could play shortstop in the show. But no, I think, like, yeah, you said it good. Like, um, this, this team's loaded in general, the infield's loaded. And, I want to be that guy that, to where, like, if the, somebody needs a break or if, uh, you know, if Boach wants to make a late game, at, uh, you know, um, lineup change and I can come plug in somewhere, like, I want to be that guy. I want to be reliable. Um, and working at all the positions is definitely going to help me get that chance. So, um, yeah, I'm just excited for the opportunity. So when you were at the uh, Frisco Caravan stop, you told us, hey, I like DH. Yeah. <laughs> what do you like about DH? That's, what do I like about DH? I think it's kind of unusual for a, a young player to say that. Well, I think DH, it's – I only got to worry about five at-bats. Um, not to say that I don't like playing infield and yeah, playing right. and, you know, helping the, you know, field for the pitcher, but it's it's not a, it's not as much on your mind mm-hmm. when you go play the game. It's, oh, I just got to – you know, get myself ready to hit for four to five at bats, and that's all I got to worry about. And you know, mentally, you know, it takes a toll on you. Or I wouldn't say it takes a toll, but playing every day in the field for a full year—that that's a grind. Oh, sure. sure. And when you can have, and we talked about like a little bit on this in the Zoom, but like having a day where you can just DH gives your legs breaks. Um, it's a lot, you know, less stress on your body, and then all you got to do is just hit. And I, the most, you know, the best tool in my toolbox is me hitting. So um, I, I wouldn't complain if sure. I was a designated hitter. What, um, what, what did you do this this off season with your swing? Uh, Ross Festermaker, we had him on last week. He said you did put in a lot of work, did some little things. What? Um, where you know, you're, you're still batting right handed. 
I'm still batting right handed. That's a good I haven't, I haven't developed this <laughs> left handed swing just yet. Um, no, I, I think uh, this offseason I had an em, uh, emphasis of uh, getting stronger rotationally. Okay. I feel like like I'm a strong guy in general, right? But when you're when you're swinging and there's a certain point to where I'm producing as much as I can with my swing, and I think I want to I want to hit the ball harder. I want to hit the ball. Um, with more force, and so I did a lot of rotational stuff. Okay. Um, that was mainly the big thing, and then towards the end of the off season, I went and hit with Tim Hires in Atlanta. Oh. And um, he's a hitting hitting guru, so yeah. he cleaned up a lo- some stuff with some connection um, and sequencing in my swing, and um, I'm putting it all together now, and the ball's coming off way harder, and I feel really good, so um, hopefully it translates. Yeah. It's pretty interesting to listen to Tim and Donnie talk about hitting and about just things that you I would never think of. I mean, I'm obviously not a baseball player, but it's stuff like that, like the the biomechanics of hitting. Donnie's a huge believer in that, and I'm assuming Tim is too. And it's just it's really interesting to hear them talk about the body and and, and how they focus on it to make you guys better. And um, and yeah, I mean. More contact, you the more you make contact. That's never been a problem. I mean, shoot, you. Now, that's what they love about you, I think. But to make uh, it yeah. a little bit further, a little bit harder. I think what's going to separate, you know, this year, you know, and going all, along with my career, um, than these past couple years is when everything's connected and sequencing good, the ball comes off way harder. And there's a point of knowledge when you talk about hitting where. Like, I've always been a good hitter, and I've yeah. always been able to make adjustments on my own, but I want to I want to get better. Like, I, there, there's the small little details about the swing and about, like, creating energy into the ground and creating energy throughout the swing um, that I didn't really understand until, you know, um, I really started talking with Tim, and Tim kind of made it very simple for me to understand, and um, it definitely makes a difference. Yeah, I'll tell you that, so... Um, and that's all I'm going to tell you. I hopefully, right. hopefully, I, y'all see it on the field more than it matters <laughs> what I'm actually saying. But it definitely makes a difference. But you're going to get a chance to play a lot this spring. I think, I think you know, games start uh, what, the set the the twenty third, twenty third, twenty third, twenty third. There's the next Friday, right? Oh, Friday. Oh, well, yeah, yeah, next Friday I'm going to be here actually. All right. um, you know, the, as you know, the team just on the World Series, they played an extra month. Um, I think that a lot of guys are going to get some some time down early on, whether they want it or not. Um, yeah, you're going to get chances. Yeah, I mean, I'm excited, man. Like, I, I want to be that guy that uh, my goal is to make the team out of camp. Yeah, uh, I set that I set that standard for myself um, after they won the World Series, and since I didn't debut last year, like, I want my goal is to make the team out of out of camp and. Um, you know, if that doesn't happen, it doesn't happen. But that's my goal, and that's my expectation for myself. And I'm going to hold, you know, everything I do in camp to that to that standard. So um, I want to help. I want to help the team win. I think um, I reached a point in my career where, you know, I'm ready, and I want to I want to contribute on a really talented and loaded team like the Rangers. And I don't think a lot of players can have that opportunity to even say that. So. Yeah. Um, yeah, I'm excited. I, I'm gonna. I'm definitely gonna be playing a lot this spring, all over, and I'm. Um, I'm gonna try to make the most of my opportunity. Well, I mean, you, you have plenty of experience. You know, I mean, the shoot, White Langford's in camp with 161. <laughs> I really yeah. have that. You know, it, it. It just seems like they don't. They don't put a number on it like you know the old days. It's like, oh, you're gonna have 500 A ball, 500 double A. I'm telling you, we're watching Oregon State in New Mexico. And uh, three run homer. This guy's got two three run homers because he really? hit one in his last at bat. Uh, Oregon State is sticking it to the Lobos here, unfortunately. But uh, <laughs> not that I'm a big New Mexico, New Mexico fan. I don't know why I said unfortunately. But, <laughs> hey, but it's, it's getting a little hey, uncomfortable. You know, they ain't Mississippi Oregon, State, man. There ain't nobody there to show who's the boss. It's 14 to 1 in the sixth. It's a good start for them. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> uh, so. Uh, you, you talked to us also in Frisco. I thought that was very interesting. You know, you were asked a question about batting average, and uh, 
you're like, hey, I started to 0 for 14. <laughs> over, <laughs> 0 for 17. <laughs> Sorry. 0 for 17. <laughs> help you out. And then um, you still had a good year. The, the, the one thing that, that stands out to me when I look at it is you walked more than you struck out. Yep. Is that is that something you've been working on? Is that something you've always done? Or is that a you've, you've found a, 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 a way around the automated balls and strikes? I, so I've always been a guy that has good strike zone discipline. I, I've always been a guy that um, puts the bat on the ball with mm-hmm. two strikes. Um, and I think with the automatic ball strike zone system, that hitters have, I wouldn't say an advantage. I would say they have more in an advantage than previous years. But in my opinion, it gave a standard to the strike zone. And for me, that plays because I know the zone. Sure. And I did pride myself on I, my. I did set a little goal for myself that I want to walk more than I strike out this year because like that's going to stand out. Oh yeah. Now that definitely came to um, me just trying to put the ball in play sometimes, and I think that's you know moving forward. That's not going to be my number one goal. I, I want to be a guy that impacts the ball and not just you know slaps at it just because I don't want to strike out. Yeah. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I've always been a guy that knows his own and, you know, prides himself on, you know, being a competitive at bat every time and not just being somebody that when they get to two strikes, it's an automatic out. Um, so yeah, like I, that automatic ball strike zone system, uh, definitely plays for me. I hope they bring it to the show here soon. <laughs> Cause I think it's just, it's just a standard to the strike zone. Pitchers, yeah. pitchers throwing 98 sinkers that get a call off the play. That shouldn't be a thing. Yeah. I got no chance. I got no chance. All right. Um, never, so if they if that's a ball, like, I it. Face. <laughs> right? Like I think that, I think that's fair. I think pit, like pitchers complain about them not getting calls. Well, you got to throw a strike. That's what the plate's there for. You know what I'm saying? Like that's what the that's what the home plate's there for. Is you got to throw it over the plate. You don't that you don't get to throw 98 sense. sinkers off the plate and it be called a strike. Wait a minute. That makes way too much sense. Now you're just being logical. Down. What the heck? <laughs> yeah, that's what the that's what the plate's there for. Um, so I'm, yeah, I'm I'm a very I'm very passionate about that. I'm very passionate. <laughs> um, okay. Did you get? Were there times though where let's say this is on plate and it like barely grazed this thing and you were like, oh, that's that's below my knees or or the catcher caught it way low and you're like, that's not a strike. And, and they it, called it a strike. Yeah. And like I could review it, I, I mean, I, or you're just like, or let, let's say it did clip the zone, yeah. and I couldn't do anything. Well, that's a strike, you know. Like that, that's that's one of the standards that they created was mm-hmm. if it clips it, that's a strike. And like you can't, I can't argue with anything at that point. Um, but when it comes to, like, yeah, I, like I'm glad they did that. Has there ever been a successful review, a successful overturn? Oh yeah. Okay. There was a time it was a three-two count, and the dude threw it like this far off the plate and I knew I started taking off my stuff and I was like, blue, that's a ball. And I just started walking and then it was a ball. Okay. <laughs> but then I did it again and it was a strike and I had to put my stuff back on. <laughs> so that me being confident got me there. But, uh, yeah, I, I like it. All right. All right. Well, good. Um, John, as you yeah, know, I got ask the non-baseball stuff. Yeah, just fun stuff. Hey, you know, we 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 when we first said, we've had John a couple times. We've talked about stuff you do on trips. We talked about your favorite foods. We talked about growing up, playing other sports. And when you were, but one one thing I wanted to learn, I got a couple guys that had a actually. Well, I didn't really one. Do you? I did have one from uh, Jason Daniels uh, or Jason Hicks. He said, "Do you like signing autographs?" <laughs> I do like signing autographs. Signing <laughs> autographs is part of the job. Okay. <laughs> Now, he's an autograph guy. I guess he asked us. I don't know if he's already autographed four fifty times. No, um, <laughs> and I it, gets it. To a point, it gets to a point where I've given that person enough autographs, and I, I know what they're going to be doing with them after a certain. You know, they don't have fifty handbooks that they're going to put them in. Yeah, right. so they're going to they're going to put them online, and that's part of it too. But I think you know. Um, as a little kid, you know, those little kids look up to you and I'm more than willing to sign for all those kids that, um, you know, so that's definitely part of the job. So but right now, oh, sorry, John, but right now there are some, uh, retire retirees who are Rangers fans who are here. There are no kids 
And then there are the autograph dealers, I guess. So the dealers, are. yeah. Do you, do you Here's my thing with it. And this is the first time I've actually talked publicly oh, about okay. this. Okay. Okay. <laughs> but if you come to a game, like if you're if you're if there's like a game that you can come to and you're in the stadium and you're chilling next to the dugout and you're saying, Hey Mr. Foskey, can I get your autograph? I'm probably gonna sign it. Uh-huh. But if you're gonna catch me outside of the stadium next to my truck asking me, I'm probably not gonna sign it. Because the game's over. I'm, you know, I'm trying to go home. Yeah, I'm trying yeah. to be with my wife. Um, but if you pay for a ticket and you get in, that's a, you know, I feel like a proper way to get an autograph. And sure, I, I respect that. If you want my autograph, come in the game. You know, ask me politely, and there shouldn't be a problem with it. Yeah. So uh, now, if you're there for the next two weeks and uh, you're the same guy, like, I'm like. I signed for you yesterday in the last 10 days. Like, what do you do? <laughs> so. Yeah, I get it. No, I, I get it. I mean, look, I've signed three autographs in my life, and I questioned the people that asked for it. I'm like, really? <laughs> so, I mean, I can't imagine what it's like for you guys, the the people that – the memorabilia, all the stuff they do. Um, I, I get that. Okay, when you were growing up, what was your favorite MLB team? So I didn't have, like, a favorite MLB team – I get I get this question all the time. Like the closest team to me was the Atlanta Braves, um, but I didn't like grow up going to games because Atlanta was like four and a half hours from my from my sure. hometown. But I was more of like a players guy. Like I was a big Jeter fan, so I like always liked watching the Yankees. Like Jeter, A Rod, Robinson Cano. Like I grew right. up watching those guys. But I loved Jeter. Um, I loved like Nolan Arenado when he was on the Rockies. Like. Like I didn't, I w- I wouldn't say like I had a favorite team, but I was more like I like to follow players and whatever team they're associated with, I'll probably root for. Do you remember okay. your first first major league game you ever went to? Um, I think the first game that I ever went to, would might have been in Tampa, Florida, at a Yankees. Okay. And you know I. I, I tried really hard to get A Rod's autograph, but A Rod had so many people. Yeah, um, sure. but I think I think that would be like my first game that I went to as like a little kid, major league. You know. Yeah, yeah. Mine was uh, summer of '85, Cubs at Padres in the former Jack Murphy Stadium. So Where was that? that was San Diego. San Diego. But that's the same. It's not the same San Diego. No, stadium. no, no, no. Petco, which is downtown. This yeah. used to be. It used to be out where the Chargers played. Uh, it's been leveled and replaced by a, a new stadium for San Diego State, but it was. Um, I thought it was great. Right? I, I, I might have went to a Cleveland. This is a funny story. <laughs> so I told you I was like basically a Yankees fan with Jeter. So I go. My my uncle's from Cleveland, so we go to an Indians game. I'm wearing all Yankees gear. The Indians won the game. I walk out all Indians gear. <laughs> like I, I said, Mom, I'm. Like, because I, I basically root for, I rooted for the team that won. Oh, no, sure. <laughs> and since the Indians won that game, I was like, Mom, I want, like, an Indians jersey or an Indians hat or whatever. So I ended up getting some Indians gear, and I ended up leaving the stadium in all Indians gear. That's <laughs> awesome. That's, okay. That's really like, I'll ask my kids. We'll, I'll be watching a game. And they'll be like, who are you going for? And I'll be like, uh, you know, if it's the Broncos and the Raiders, let's say. I'll have the Broncos. And they'll say, what's the score? Uh, Raiders are up 14 to 7. I think I'm going to go for the Raiders. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So that's that's the way. All right. So when you get to the big leagues, what current player will you be the most excited to play against or meet? You know, kind of that, holy crud. I mean, I'm on the field playing against, like, this current guy that's been, like, someone you've watched a while. or you. Yeah, Mike, Mike, Trout. Oh, huh? Mike, Mike Trout. Mike Trout. Mike Trout. That's easy. Mike that's a great Trout. one. Um, so yeah, so when I was, uh, I think I might have when they built the new Ranger Stadium. I don't know if I was in Frisco at the time. No, that was in they built it in twenty. They built it in twenty. So I was at the alt site. There yeah. you go. So I was at the alt site in twenty. No fans. Right. We were training at Arlington. We go to a game one night. Trouty goes deep, and I'm like, okay. <laughs> like he hit it like. In the second deck, basically left. Oh, the Yeah, yeah, I remember it. And I was like, "Oh my gosh!" 
Like that's impressive. But like Trouty, I admire Trout because just like his greatness and everything. But uh, and I, it'll be cool because they're in the same division. But um, yeah, yeah. So we'll get to get to do it. Okay, I've got two more. And we're gonna let you get out of here. What is your favorite baseball movie? Uh, Pride Moneyball. Yeah, see, we were pretty good. It. Probably Moneyball. I think Moneyball highlights a lot of the things that, uh, like, you know, a normal fan wouldn't really know. Um, but it highlights a lot of the stuff that actually goes on. Yeah. Okay. And, I mean, it was, hang on, it was revolutionary thinking at the time. Revolutionary thinking at the time, but a lot of teams think like that now. Yeah, they all do. Yeah. I mean, yeah. yeah. The, the analytics comes into all of it, and they're, yeah, they look for it's on base percentage. The OPS has become huge. So, okay, last question. You get to host a dinner party. Three <laughs> former or current Major League Baseball players are invited. Who are they? What are you cooking? <laughs> what are you cooking? What am I cooking? Well, I'm not going to be cooking. My <laughs> wife's going to be cooking. Um, three current or former players. Well, Jeter, I mean, right? Well, maybe not. I don't know. Uh, this is a tough question. Because <laughs> there's so many players to choose from. I know it. There really is. Um, golly. This is going to be a fun one all year, I'm going to ask. Yeah. I'm trying to think of, like, personality. Oh. Uh, That's a good way to go. They're making a conversation. Who'd have a great conversation? Golly. Uh, Can they be dead, John? Well, no. They're not going to eat much. (laughs) You've heard people say, oh, well, I'm trying to think of three teams. I'm going blank on the teams. Uh, There's the Rangers. There's the Rangers. Let's go Jeter. Mm-hmm. Okay. Let's go. Um, thinking of the Dodgers guy. Let's go uh, Mookie Betts. That that's an interesting one. Very good bowler. <laughs> um. Let's go with uh, Kelly. <laughs> I mean, I'm I'm trying to come up with like the perfect answer, but well, it's your answer. I know. Yeah. Right. Maybe one of your teammates. Maybe you want Seager at dinner. I haven't really talked with Seager yet. Get <laughs> are we? Just kidding. Just kidding. Um. I'm trying to think of a pitcher. Let's see. Oh, I, I think I'll, 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 I'll say my boy Jordan Westberg. Okay, Jordan Westberg. What do, what do you have? What's your What's your wife cooking? What's her best meal? Salmon, green beans, and rice. Okay. All right, that's good. All right, that's Jeff. Good. Anything else for you? Well, how does she prepare her salmon? Yeah, what is she? I don't really? know. I'm on the couch when she makes it. <laughs> well, my wife is a phenomenal cook. Just unbelievable. I, I try to say that every time I get the opportunity. Yeah, she, my, my, it's a, it's I got a the opportunity to say it. My wife's a really good cook. Too. It's a blessing. Yeah. My wife is a good cook if there is a recipe. She is not somebody that can look in the pantry, see what there is, and throw something together. That's she's the everybody. person that has to have the recipe, and it's good. But she's all right. She doesn't take offense to that. She gets it. She's like, you're right. So I actually cook more in my house. Well, uh, I, I I was the cook to start, and now it's just it's not even close. Uh, me and my wife got things. She cooks. I do the dishes. I do oh, the di- now. I do the dishes. I like doing dishes. I don't. It doesn't bother me to do I, dishes. I don't like doing them, but that's the deal we made. And. <laughs> <laughs> Well, the thing we got to do, when I was my kid's age, I was cleaning the damn kitchen. And they're not in anything now. So it's time. It's time. 
You, so. You're never too late. My kids didn't for a while too, Jeff, but I'm telling you, when they got in junior high and high school, they were doing it. It's never too late. You can kick them in. No, no, it's it's got to start. They, yep. they've, been, they've, been, they've been coasting for too long. It's time to listen. <laughs> That's absolutely right. Hey, Justin, <laughs> man, dude, we appreciate you coming on. Jeff, you got anything else? No, just see you tomorrow. Yeah, I'll see you. Yeah, guys. he'll see you. I'll be out there March 6th, so I'll definitely come out and, and bug you, give you some crap when I get yeah. out there. But we'll be out there for another six days then, and, Jeff, you're going to go back for the very end. That's right. That's right. So you'll see Jeff's pretty face a lot. You'll see me for a week there. It'll be a fun month. Yeah, it should be. Absolutely. Be All right, month. that's Justin Foscue, infielder for the Texas Rangers. Justin, thanks so much for joining us. Um, have a good one. Guys, we're going down in the bus league after this. A big thanks to Justin Voskey for joining us right there. It's time to go down in the bus leagues again. Um, don't know what all we can talk about down in the bus leagues. Wyatt Langford is in camp. You took some pictures of him today. I saw him. He's taking oh, his yeah. He got a uh, little video. I tweeted it out. He's taking swings. Yeah, he's here. Um, you know, uh, we we I don't want to say we bum rushed him, but he had been here about twenty minutes when we when we pounced on. <laughs> you know, get it out of the way, I guess. You know, there'll be stories on him and. Uh, Today at, at rangerstoday.com, once we knock this stuff out, um, it's it's five ninety nine a month, but we're running a special for the year. $48. $48 through next Friday. $48 for a year. So anyway, uh, he's here, took batting practice. Uh, you know, he's really going to need to work on his defense uh, this spring. Uh, you know, it, interestingly, Fangraphs did their uh, list of top prospects in baseball, <laughs> and he was number two. Uh, they have been between over. Jackson Holiday and uh, Jack, Jackson Churios, um, <clears throat> and and um, but the Fangraphs said that because he doesn't really have a position and because his defense is kind of uncertain, that's why they went with Jackson Holiday. I mean, they considered Wyatt Langford for the to top, be top overall prospect baseball. Um, so <clears throat> it, it's an but issue. Again, great <laughs> Fangraph Fangraph has the Rangers have a twenty six percent chance of winning. Uh, the West. So it's weird how their things work. I don't know, but I like fan graph actually. It's fun to look up stats there. Yeah. Um, so anyway, um, so he's here. Um, you know, uh, a, a lot of the, a lot of the, the guys who need to need to step up who the, the upper level pitching guys, uh, Owen White, Cole Wynn. Is, is Kumar there? Let me finish. Zach Kent. Um, okay. I was about to sneeze. <laughs> I'll start again. Owen White, Jack Leiter, Cole Wynn, Zach Kent. Um, talk to them. I think that'll probably be the Sunday read. Uh, Friday on the farm, though, is, is going to be uh, Cole Wynn, if I ever get around to finishing it. Had a good talk with him after his tour in Puerto Rico. and He's yeah. not high what's happened in the last couple of years at AAA. It's been, it's been bad. Um, but he's here, seems to be in good spirits. And, and there are minor leaguers here. They're, they're working out right now. They're kind of staying out of the big leaguers' way. The big leaguers kind of have right of way out here. And so they've been working out in the mornings. Um, and so, um, but I saw, I saw Dane Acker when I went down to get, uh, get Justin. I ran into Dane Acker, and he's doing good. Uh, the knee that he had a little surgery on, he said it's fine. And, uh, uh, looking forward to catching up with a lot of these guys. You know, as uh, we can come out with these grand ideas if i'm gonna write this story it's gonna be great and then um somebody shows up and it's like well poop i need to write this story so yep. anyway uh you know like why length for today so that, that's kind of put me behind the eight ball a little bit but um you know the the farm system uh which baseball america rated third best in all baseball um a lot of guys who are gonna graduate and, and lose prospect status uh you know Langford and Carter being the the, the two most uh, preeminent ones, uh, but there's still a lot of talent down there, and yeah, uh, I'm looking forward to, to to our on our trip, our second trip, my second trip, your first trip, that we'll be able to uh, to really yeah, dive yeah. 
guys and, and, and had some good good talks with them. But um, get on yeah. the back fields. Yeah. That's yeah. going to be a lot of fun. Abby, I, I can't wait to see Abby up close. I've never seen Abby up close. Who's probably going to start out in double in A. Um, you know, I, I want to see Sebastian again. Just he was a specimen last year. I'm ready to see Walcott again coming in. Um, Teodo, I want you know the the new kid. I, I'm assuming they're going to get him stateside. Uh, the kid they just signed. Uh, well, they yeah. there was yeah uh, Polino, but yeah. he's going to be in the top. Uh, I've got him in mind. Which by the way, I need to roll that out. We need to get that going. I need uh, to roll it. send me yeah. the first. I just haven't edited it yet. Yeah, and I've got to get the. I got to start doing the countdown on it, but. I can't wait. And guys, I'm, I can't say this over and over again. If you get a chance to go to spring training, it's a great time to get around these guys. It's going to be a little crazy this year. Um, yeah. I think the, the people are going to be around. This is the world champions. So they're going to be around there. Um, but uh, it, I can't wait to be out. I'm I, Every day I'm looking for the videos. Jeff's is posting, um, you know, and, and getting stuff out to me. He's you're writing more too. you got more things. You're popping in and out. you got, you know, a couple dropped yesterday. Um, and doing all that. So I, I've watched you at work. I know how you do it. So uh, it's exciting. This is where you need to be, guys. You need to be here at Rangers today. 48 bucks is a steal. This is going to get you info every day. You can join the newsletter. That one's free. Uh, join the join the uh, here in Odyssey, again, who's got us on here. They, they're taking care of us, too. The podcast is everywhere. So, guys, um, the this is where to be for your Rangers coverage. This is full Ranger coverage from the big leagues and front office all the way down to the minor leagues. There's no one that does it better. Well, I agree with that. I, 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 <laughs> I, I couldn't agree more, but uh, I really, I really enjoy writing the minor leagues and I think we do it better than anybody else. So um, yeah, come on, come on aboard, you know, yep. the more the merrier. Yep. Well, you know what? Let's get this out of here. Well, there wasn't going to be a lot to do today. Um, you'll be you'll be still out there next week for our next episode. We'll get some, we'll get something in the can before you get on the airplane, probably. Um, yeah. And then we'll uh, be be back in the studio the week after. Before I think that's I think we're about one good week home before we head back out. Yeah, and, uh, we're looking we're looking at John Gray next uh, next week. Uh, he he loves coming on our show. I know. Yeah, what a guy. He, he thinks it's great. Uh, I think Justin thought it was great. Uh, yeah, we have a good time with these guys. And, uh, y'all don't I, see y'all don't see the behind the scenes. Justin's giving me shit because I excuse me, he's giving me crap because I can't get the thing set. I'm going, come on, John. You know these guys. How's the mood? Does it seem like everybody's just in a? They're just are they ready to get rolling? Yeah, they're. I mean, they're they're the same. I mean, they're the last time we saw them, they were celebrating, but it's it's now back to baseball and. Uh, right. But but this time of year everybody's in a good mood, so yeah. that's good. Um, but yeah, so uh, John Gray next week. Uh, we're probably probably looking at Cole Win the week after that, uh, and then we'll be here. So we'll we'll figure out what we're gonna do. But um, good things are happening uh, with the Rangers. Good things are happening with Rangers today and the Rangers Today Baseball Podcast. Absolutely, absolutely. Big thanks to Odyssey. Big thanks to Justin Foscu. Thank you, Premier Properties, for sponsoring us coming out to spring training. Guys, we're going to put this one in the can and get out of here next week. John Gray's, <laughs> excuse me, John Gray's <laughs> supposed to join us. Until then, guys, see you at the yard. <laughs>